Uh, welcome to the show. Um, I was going to put a video up today because um, I just wanted to explain. This is the uh, stats from nuclear-news.net. And I just wanted to explain to you the situation we've got. Now, I did another video which showed like a big drop in Google search terms for um, uh, basically last year, starting in around about July. We had a massive drop off. And this was after the <coughs> UK government <coughs> and the American uh, governments were sort of looking into, well, they actually asked all the owners of YouTube, well, Google, uh, Twitter, Facebook uh, to come in. And, um, and they were challenging uh, fake news. I think that was the, the, the uh, term they were using last year. So <coughs> now I was sort of saying that <coughs> basically what I, <coughs> excuse me, so basically we were looking at uh, the, the stats and uh, how many of those would come from uh, Google search. So we've got 288 views today, okay? And about 84 of those, um, can you see that all right? I'll just double check, yeah. 84 of those are actually from uh, um, uh, the search engines. And only 62 of those are from Google search. So. If we knocked off the 80, uh, yeah, yeah, if we knocked off 84, we'd say we call it round up to 200 views came in from other um, sort of um, areas. Now, <clears throat> what would have happened this time last year was that we would have seen um, about 200 coming in from various sources, about 200 from Google search, and uh, probably something like 20 or 30 maybe from Bing, DuckGoGo, Badu and Yahoo and that sort of thing. So what's happened now obviously is we're now down to 62. Now this is actually a bit lower um, because we've got some contentious posts going on um, and I'll bring us to that in a minute because I just wanted to discuss about Novichok um, and uh, I've been posting around this Novichok uh, article all over the place. Now I can't post it on Facebook as a, as a post, but I go to the comment section now to get around the filtering on Facebook and put it into the actual comments. And we get a, we get a kind of a feedback from that. So if you look down here, uh, just make sure that we've got that. Uh, yep, we've got 49 from Facebook, um, which is uh, about half of what the well, actually, it's, it's about the same as Google search. Now, I got all those from the last couple of days, three days or so, posting on Facebook. OK. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's quite stunning. You know, so basically Yahoo, Badu, DuckGoGo, Bing are actually giving us a much higher rate compared to Google. OK, well, look, I've covered this on the other video and you can have a look at it. Um, but uh, all right, so why why has this dropped? So last week we were getting, uh, I think it was a third. So if it was um, say 200 views, um, we would expect at least 100 views from Google, and then some from Bing and DuckGoGo and what have you. So um, but uh, so we'd have had about 320, 340 uh, hits. Now. Um, right, so with that in mind, and I'd also like to point out to you that uh, we have uh, 1,000 followers. I, I hope you can see that. I'll just bring that across a little bit. And we've got 1,046 fo uh, followers, as you can see there. All right, okay. So now let's click over to nuclear-news.net. And uh, so we've had a drop basically. Uh, and I, I noticed uh, that, uh, unfortunately, that when I put this up and I typed in Novichok within the hour and did the Google search within the hour, this did not come up. OK, this, th this did not come up. There wasn't much talking about Novichok at that particular day, so there was very few hits. But this, it was less than a page of hits under an hour, and this did not come up. And then uh, I tried it on 24 hours and I went through 17 pages and uh, of Novichok related articles and this did not come up. So this is blocked and certainly that the, the, well actually let's try it out. <coughs> let's give it a go, put it into the search term, paste and hit. 
Well, it does actually come up if you put all of it in. Very odd. Okay. All right, but it's not coming up. Well, it didn't come up straight away on the search terms. And I, I think if you typed in Novichok, you'd have like hundreds of pages now. So it, it's kind of missed the sweet spot where bloggers and researchers would be trying to uh, find something that's new. So I don't get anything new. This is a historical issue. Right, so <clears throat> I'm going to do a little thing on this. So I contacted Chris Buzz because I did some, uh, I did some articles and I'm just going to show you that All right and it's uh, basically the, the question is Novichox and related third fourth generation OP agents uh, this started in September uh, was, oh no, that's registered sorry posted on the 2007 okay so that's basically when this thread started there's four pages and uh, as you can see here I'll uh, highlight it just so that you can see. That's the chemical equations for three of the particular series of the Novichok. Okay. Now, where is this, you may say? Well, this is an American site. Um, so, uh, well, he says Brad de Mordor, so he's just being completely hidden there. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I just want to get one. Yeah, I'd like say a good old USA, just there. So uh, th these are Americans anyway. I'm sure if you look at the, uh, the, the what, what they're spelling, you know, they'll have the American versions. Anyway, so they were talking about this and um, they started off and I think it was, uh, oh yeah, this is pretty much a summary of what I've been able to find on this. This, uh, this There was a thread here about this two and a half years ago, but that seems a bit stale to reopen, he said, All right? Anyway, I'm gonna go to page four page four and we're going to uh, as you can see they're discussing the chemical equations and all the rest of it uh, there's lots of comments on here so I won't go into that but I'm going to go right down to the bottom of the last page and uh, we're going to right to uh, 2012 right so that was uh, so it was five years plus there was two and a half years before that where they were discussing this issue now in this thread which I've linked to and I've linked to it on this link here uh, I hope you can see it yeah you can you can see it is this link here now <clears throat> after some research on Novichok I discovered that and I'm going to read this out one militarized organophosphates called MOPs can be processed into a sticky oil or a fine powder or a gas now the sticky oil is probably the easiest one to make because if you want to make a fine powder or a gas, you'd get your sticky oil and then you'd refine it further. Uh, there are at least four types. Uh, new nuclear, biological and chemical MBC suits uh, were developed before Desert Shield at the first, first Iraq war, as the Novichok series of chemical agents were designed to circumnavigate the old Noddy suits, uh, Noddy suits being NBC suits that I describe, uh, supplied to the military. So, of course, they were worried about, uh, well, they said, they were worried about, as Saddam Hussein, having chemical weapons. And uh, the Novichok series were basically designed to get around, uh, in, in when they were originally made, to get around the uh, NATO's uh, 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 chemical uh, and nuclear and biological warfare suits, that's NBC. Right, OK, so <laughs> they thought, oh, well, they might have that. But by the time the first Gulf War was uh, basically initiated uh, the first Iraq invasion sorry um, that basically they had this and I've got some other evidence further down to explain this all right so I'm going to try and get through this fairly quickly and link to the article underneath the YouTube and please share and you know pass this all around I expect this well you know it's obviously being filtered uh, but anyway uh, three uh, Novichok series compounds are detectable easily with the testing equipment that was developed prior to Desert Shield. Right, they needed to obviously uh, be able to see if there was uh, these chemicals. So they, they came out with a, uh, a way of testing for Novichok. So they could tell the soldiers who would put their suits on and Bob's your uncle and then know what they're dealing with. So they'd, they'd know it's a sticky compound and, you know, and it was dangerous. And so they could, they could bring in the right uh, procedures. All right, anyway, number four, it is very likely the antidote was developed prior to Desert Shield, as I said. Um, and we're looking at uh, <coughs> Scripple's daughter and the policemen are recovering 
right? So basically, it, it makes me think that they, they do have an antidote and they would have tried to develop an antidote and we know that uh, years later chemists were talking about it and you know so anyway by making all references to Novichok series a matter of national security the OPCW the Organization for the Protection of Chemical Warfare which is part of the UN was not told that these compounds were so dangerous uh, that's according to media reports thus allow and they, they don't have it listed as a dangerous uh, chemical so this allowed the US and the UK to keep such weapons and work with them and, uh, and they kept them on their shelves, obviously. Um, most of the Russian, number six, most of the Russian peer reviewed studies on this were done under the guise of fertilizer insecticide, insecticide production. And I think there's about, I, I think it was 80 or 90 peer reviewed uh, articles on this, uh, most of which came, and this was, I don't know, in the 60s and 70s sort of time uh, when they were developing it. And they, they kind of needed to go go on the peer review so that people could come in and say, oh, no, that, that chemical won't work. And the conversation, basically, that they were having on Science Madness, right, the, you know, the technical aspects of this uh, chemical. So um, let's see. Number seven, although some of the precursors uh, like CO2, and when I say precursor, I mean the things that they added to the organophosphates to make uh, make this uh, a very nasty product uh, are actually nasty within themselves so uh, they were, you, you couldn't make it necessarily in a garage but if you had a synthetic chemist in a lab they could produce this you know and that could be produced anywhere that was a, a comment that was made um, uh, that was actually made by Chris Busby um, so Concerning the polonium-210 poisoning of Levenko, I thought I'd bring this up because uh, Chris actually mentioned this as well. They were saying polonium could only come from Russia and it's the only manufacturer of polonium. And it probably is, but the fact is you can still create a small enough to, to poison someone it very easily, like Leven Levenko. Uh, Levenko. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, that it could be synthesized by reducing radium tubes and dials uh, chemically, uh, you know, reasonably easily. Um, I have a posit that these chemicals were not recognized as a chemical weapon because of the need to protect big agricultural profits and their business models. Uh, you know, and I just sort of pointed out that Russia is uh, going very much organic. Um, uh, and, you know, maybe they think, well, we don't want loads of these organophosphates flying around because they're dangerous. You can make bombs out of them. You can make chemical weapons out of them, you know, reasonably easy. Um, so anyway, I decided to see if any country could make this because they were saying no country can make this only Russia can make this right and I decided not to look at USA and UK because you know to be honest with you all these points up here proved that indeed they had got it but you know why would UK do it they'd be really stupid to do it why would America do it they'd be stupid to do it you know and I know there's reasons that people are putting out there but anyway I'll leave you to read those articles and they may be right uh, but it, from my point of view, it would be really stupid to do it. Um, and certainly for Russia, it would be even more stupid to do it. But anyway, so it, what sort of country really hates Russia? I thought, well, Ukraine does. It's obvious, isn't it? They, I can go on to YouTube and they're going on about how bad uh, Russia are. And, you know, there's people saying that, you know, they, they should um, have plenty of, the, you know, there's a fire recently in Russia. And uh, one of the uh, U Ukrainian officials is saying we should uh, give uh, Russia one of those, you know, a, a week or a day or something. Uh, it's quite disgusting, but but <clears throat> it's only because they hate them so much, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I decided to see if this country, Ukra I decided Ukraine was going to be the example that I was going to use because you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a possibility that they might do something stupid like this and yeah you're all saying oh well ukraine government is working with the cia and da 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 but it's all you know you can't prove that uh, well very easily um so i then found a 2017 osce report so that's the uh, uh, un body uh, for well it's actually a european body uh, connected to the un uh, who uh, who basically uh, do reports on on lots of stuff you know um, uh, certainly do with war and chemical weapons and, uh, and chemical handling just normal chemical handling uh, and they they uh, so I basically linked to it further down but they cited the need to improve 
to improve their um, sort of procedures. Um, so <clears throat> what we found was that uh, they had to uh, um, improve chemical handling, transportation, and safety in Ukrainian labs. They needed to be uh, that needed to be improved in a three-year plan that's supposed to be finished in 2020. Uh, they were <clears throat> This was initiated and funded by the EU and USA. Now uh, Ukraine also sent a battalion of chemically trained. Uh, chem nuclear and biological and chemical trained soldiers to Kuwait to uh, sort of support the Kuwaiti uh, uh, government, um, obviously because of the uh, closeness to Iraq. <clears throat> this was before the Iraq invasion of uh, 2003, which is called Desert Storm. So one week after the incident, the Skirples and the Ukrainian uh, government sent a message to the UK, which is a bit weird. Now the Ukraine is ready to provide Britain with assistance in investigating the case of poisoning of former Russian intelligence agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Pavel Klimkin said. All right. So, I mean, <clears throat> I put some links down here which show that Ukraine uh, actually manufactures organophosphates, or well, uh, the the precursors to it, um, and uh, <clears throat> the main ingredient, if you like. Um, and uh, you know it could have been anybody I, I also say here it could have been anybody uh, but it does this whole bit of evidence here does bust the issue that the only the uh, only Russia uh, could have uh, sort of produced this and it was the only place that had it and blah 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 <clears throat> even though uh, I think it was 10 months ago uh, the OCPW turned around and said um, well actually they've got rid of all their chemical weapons uh, which was uh, quite interesting so, um, is there anything else I want to say about this? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's just a, quite interesting. Um, I would say uh, I posted this around on Facebook and, and I, I, I got seriously hacked. <laughs> My computer got taken down. And uh, the reason why this uh, video is going to be a bit uh, scrappy, uh, to say the least, is because... Uh, yeah, because at the end of the day, I've, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm just uh, building up my software again. So, um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I've got pretty cheap uh, sort of setup anyway. But uh, anyway, look, I've, I'm going to link to this to the bottom. Uh, you can have a read of it. Um, uh, you can uh, link to the source materials that I've done. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's that, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'll just show you the rest. They're all the source materials. You know. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, the UK is investigating, of course, it will bring, and, uh, well, it is already known that the poisoning was due to chemicals that were developed in Russia, the Ukrainian official said. We are in solidarity with Britain if, uh, if we need, if you, if you need our help, expert or other, we will provide it, the minister said to journalists on Tuesday in Kiev. And that was obviously uh, uh, Pavel, Mr. Pavel, and uh, and I've linked the Interfax uh, Ukrainian article, which you have to do, you know, as you can see, uh, you have to do a Google Translate on, but uh, they're, they're basically saying, you know, we have the expertise to do this. So, anyway, you can draw your own conclusions. I'm sure the Ukrainians wouldn't ever dare using chemical weapons, would they? Uh, but they did actually blame, uh, uh, they actually notified NATO uh, of a possible chemical weapon supply getting into the Crimea, right? Um, so I, I put that link in as well. So uh, they're certainly up for blaming Russia. Um, and this was, uh, let's have a look. Uh, we might as well just look at it. Um, 3rd of December 2016, so not too long ago. And uh, that was uh, the Crimean news agency. So, uh, uh, but it's actually a report from Kiev you can see that's a KYIV, that's the Ukrainian version way of spelling or the Russian way of spelling it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, it's quite interesting. Um, uh, I suppose we could have a... Yeah, so they were saying that a ship arrived in uh, Fyodoza port in late October and blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, Russia has a huge... And the reason they invaded Crimea in the first place, if you want to call it an invasion, uh, is because they were protecting their NATO base that was on that, and they, you know, obviously the Ukrainians would have told them to, to leave that if they had Crimea, and it's the only port that Russia has had in hundreds of years uh, which butts onto the Mediterranean, so they need that for their defence. There was just no way they were going to give that up. 
um, and they decided to uh, to obviously annex it. <coughs> but uh, anyway, the rights and wrongs of that is down to whoever. But uh, but it was certainly understandable that they would do it. So anyway, um, so I've, I've I've done the article. I put it up there. It's been filtered. Uh, all sorts of problems and uh, I'll stick this video up you can uh, hopefully share it round it's Creative Commons so um, and I'd also do a quick shout out to Julian Assange as well just uh, you know and we've got a petition down there you can sign and it's worth having a look at uh, what uh, uh, John Pill just said it's quite shocking uh, the videos top right hand corner of the home page and you can get the home page by clicking up here on nuclear news you see that bit there yeah, you click on that you go to the home page let's do it anyway just to show you it can be done and uh, yeah we've got lots of interesting articles there as well I might as well push those because we're being filtered uh, UK anti-nuclear activists are uh, protesting at Aldermaston bomb factory um, so <laughs> uh, you won't see that on the BBC uh, Belgium will refuse to operate nuclear plants in favour of wind generators. We won't hear that. I mean, that was actually not fully re uh, released. It was actually came out as a tweet by someone uh, who tweeted out the official statement. Uh, we've stopped talking about nuclear disarmament. That's quite an interesting article. 60-day um, pump, and it's sort of saying why uh, Jeremy Corbyn isn't uh, doing his usual CND thing. It's because of pressures. Uh, people really love nuclear weapons now. Um, anyway, and there's also actually in the for our American guys, there's a 60 day public comment period that went up today um, and it started on February the 12th, but it was only, uh, according to Google anyway, it was only actually released today. It only came up on Google today, which is April the 1st. So you've got 12 days left to do uh, a public comment period on proposed modifications to Purex storage tunnels. Where, well, I don't know, you can read the article there. They stick all their plutonium and stuff down there in Hanford. It's nasty. Um, uh, the top Scarner officials in America uh, uh, actually botched a nuclear project in 2016, tried to cover it up so they could get about $3 million in summer bonuses. Uh, that was quite interesting. And uh, yeah, so we got that. And uh, there's a really good article about Japan, uh, uh, the anti-nuclear movement in Japan. And I, I think that's a great article. Um, and it's by uh, Takahiri Masutomo. Um, so worth a look. Um, yeah, oh, oh, good news today. First Energy, nuclear energy company, bankruptcy now lodged, 1st of April. Uh, there's a couple of articles that have gone up about that. You might catch that on the mainstream. Um, I caught it, it just went up like that. Uh, then about an hour later, um, there was uh, an article from F, oh, where is it? Sorry, I'll just get it for you. Uh, an article was printed, a really long one, uh, khq.com, but uh, you can check that out. Um, and I also linked here to uh, the uh, vast PR firms popularizing the Saudi pr cr uh, Crown Prince, and we were looking at uh, the BP Gulf oil disaster, Fukushima nuclear disaster, and the companies behind that who connect to uh, Cambridge Analytica and SCL is all one big happy family and WPP LLC who by the way when I was trying to search my blog for the WPP articles I, where I connect um, Tony Blair and uh, what was it um, uh, Fukushima, BP Gulf oil disaster and a rake of other stuff all those I can't I can't access them by using Google search and we've got too many I've, I've tried to find some of the articles before uh, one was concerning Sir Martin Sorrell, who owns that particular uh, uh, holding group that owns all the groups that are mentioned here. I mean, they've got it down here. They're, it's uh, a Harbour Group. Uh, that was it, Burson and Marstella, which are they're really dodgy. They've got a very bad, you know, they'll do nasty things to get their thing. But then there's Hill and Knowlton. They own them. Uh, they probably own others here. I haven't looked at them all. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, they, they've got about, as you can see here, 54% of the PR market and this Dentsu crowd connect to WPP that anyway but um, I, I can now no longer find the connections between them so the WPP or probably the, the people that would have done that would have been Burson and Moore Stella uh, they've uh, basically managed to be cleansing the internet of all connections <laughs> or as many as they could anyway but we still get I, I still got some links and uh, some of the things but anyway 
Uh, that's it. Thank you.